Good morning, guys. Well, it's morning for me. It's uh, Sunday morning. I got a couple packages yesterday, and I just want to do a quick review. I got some parts from FCP Euro, and that will be my upper and lower boot for the intake. So mine's already cracking. You guys could probably see it from there. And uh, the only reason why I noticed that I had to replace them is because this guy, so this expansion tank for the radiator actually cracked on me when I was driving from work. Now, this one is from Euro Parts. And uh, sadly, I tried to contact them because it is a year old. Now, they're asking me a bunch of questions if I still have it. Supposedly, I'm not in the system where I bought them. So, I was pretty upset over it. Um, the, they weren't able to help me if, if I had, didn't show any proof of it, if, uh, purchase from their website. Now, everything should be on their website. Uh, sadly, it's been a year, a year and a half since I bought it. And it, and it just cracked. And it kind of, so the way that it happened is that I was driving once I got to the drop side. It showed that uh, I was low on cooling. And I said, all right, I'll check it before I go home. I'll check it before driving back home. And it was halfway down. And I was like, hmm, you know what? It could be the drive. It is hot here in California. So I said, ah, it's probably, you know, it's, 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 it should be normal. Now, the only reason why I didn't know that it was leaking, because when we're out there at the job site, it's usually dirt. Now, that same day, I got home late, parked my car, didn't really pay attention to it. The following day, turned on the car, it showed low cooling again. So I said, all right. Now, I don't think, I felt I tapped it off. And there you see. I topped it off, so I came. So the following day, I checked it, I opened it, and uh, it was halfway. It was slow. Topped it off again. Drove to the job site. Showed me the light that it was low, and I said, "Okay." So now, I kind of feeling there's something wrong with it. So once I got home on Friday, after driving the car, parked it, let the running for a cool ten minutes. Um, topped it off. Uh, let it run for ten minutes. And I noticed that I had antifreeze on the floor. So I turned off the car, took everything apart. That's how I noticed that I had to replace the intake boot as well. And yep, there was a crack. Sadly, I tried to fix it. I tried to put some uh, uh, JB Weld just because I had to get to work. But because it was uh, Friday, uh, the Thursday night, I did the JB Well Friday, drove it back and forth, got home. It's been parked for almost two weeks. I I pretty much, during that week, when I found out that it was cracked, I was trying to hit up Euro parts, but they are, don't want to send me another one. So I said, you know what, fuck it. It was 30 bucks, 30 something from Euro parts. And uh, from FCP Euro, their parts, I think, was uh, 55. Um, it was 55 plus. And, I mean, it comes with lifetime warranty. All I got to do is just return it. So, make sure you save this package. Now, this one's not the one. Uh, for the expansion takes, you'll be here today, Sunday, in the afternoon. So, I'll make a video. Right now, what I have, it's the upper and lower boot for the intake. So it'll be those two. Now, I am going to replace. So I'm going to take everything apart. And I'll try to make a quick video about it. So, just first, I'll replace what I got. And then also, if you guys have LED lights. I have LED lights on mine. But, we know that when you turn them on, they flicker. Um... Or you will have a kind of an error code showing that um, one of your lights it's out and I'm sure you guys probably noticed that on my video so I'm, I'm gonna try to fix it same thing I bought this one's from 
Amazon, they mentioned that they, they have good reviews. I'll tell you guys that. But I am going to have to cut this one. Cut the mail, I believe. Plus, and this one's different. But the uh, male to female to, for the H7, it's the right one. So I'll leave this one. I'll probably cut this one and solder it to this one, cutting it. So that's one. And then the next video would be me showing you guys how to install a short shifter. Now this one's eBay. And um, I already had one. It's pretty good. There is a lot of modifications that we got to do because it is aftermarket but i'll probably i'll make a video show you guys how to do it how to do it the right way and um try to make it fit as snug as we can because it is a pain yes especially trying to put this one on the bottom of the car and i had to get myself a panoramic rear mirror because i know it's going to look good on the e46 and I got this idea from uh, from uh, my friend um, Ricky, the guy that paints the car. On his uh, drip project, he has one of those and it looked pretty nice. So we're going to go ahead and start with the easiest, which it would be installing the rear mirror. So let's get to it, guys. All right, so here we have you guys. Just look at that way difference um i believe you get some of the blind spots um with the oem you would only see the rear windshield but now with this one you're able to see uh your blind spots which would be for example for us would be that uh small window big windshield and the small window on this side so now that it's done but it looks good guys I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Now let's get the other things. All right, guys. So for the next step that I got to fix would be, let me hold the steering wheel. And I wasn't sure if you guys could see that, but I'm gonna show you guys again. You see that flickering? So that's one problem. And that's what it shows on my car. So now we know that my headlights flicker every time I try to turn on the car. And it shows that my passenger side, it's uh, no good. So those two typical errors that it shows, we're going to see hopefully this uh, fixes it. Now, some something I read, and there's always different ones. So like for example I bought this one it's a it's a load resistor canvas LED canvas but so pretty much their job is to because we know that LED lights or any LED uh, have low consumption for electricity and um, that's what happens that's what triggers on the computer on your dashboard showing that you have a blown headlight blown corner light but in reality it's just um for example my corner lights are leds right so now the front ones are uh, original my side ones are led and the back ones are led so it doesn't give me a code because i have the original ones on the front but if i were to put an led it will show me that my uh uh turn signals are not working properly. So it'll just show me what the little light shows that the headlight's not working, but it'll show me that. Now that's, uh, I bought this ones, but they were drunk. Uh, the guy actually gave me the money back when I bought them from, uh, from Amazon. Even though they had good reviews, they sucked. Now, let's say out of 10 people, five of them recommended this one. And then out of 10 people, eight people recommended this type. It's 
especially this one now this ones do get hot and there's people that don't read the description and they'll just leave it hanging now for those we have to do is uh this one's gonna get hot so it could not be close to any plastic now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to mount it somewhere where there's metal and uh it's not gonna touch anything that's plastic because it does get hot so now don't forget it gets super hot now but it only gets hot when you have the lights on because its job is to get as much electricity build up to show your dashboard that your lights working properly even though it's consuming low uh, electricity but this is their job to get as much energy or electricity build up here to show on your on your dashboard that it's actually working properly so that's one so let's uh, hopefully it fixes it and um i'll show you guys i'm starting this one this one's a lot easier and i got a little bit of space so i'll show you guys in a bit all right guys so now that i got this piece solder and I almost burned my box but here it is so i'm just going to put a little bit of uh, electrical tape put the heat shrink and we should be good and test it out all right guys so we have the passenger side done but before i get so i test fit both of them and everything's good like i mentioned this was not hot that one's pretty hot now what we're gonna go ahead is turn on the car now sadly they still flicker as you can see there but the light went away for the dashboard so that's a good thing so now that we have yeah it sucks it still flickers um but it's doing the job now it doesn't show that the passenger side it's um it shows the error code but it's uh working now that's one light so we took care of it now we're gonna go ahead and do this one so same thing i'll solder cut the piece and we'll install it but i won't show that so now next step would be once i get uh so this video will be short just for this the next video you guys would see me replacing the upper boot and the lower boot and once i take all this apart then and i get the expansion tank will replace that one but as of right now guys that's pretty much it that will kind of give you guys an update i put the cover back on so it will give you guys like a update of what happened to my car or why i haven't uh i made some videos so this is just like a quick video um trying to make it short but yeah so stay tuned i'll be replacing those two and my uh, expansion tank and for this video, I will show you guys how to do it the right way. Now, yes, you guys remember I had a short shifter. Now, I went a little cheaper, and it's an, uh, this one were 25 with shipping and handling, which is cool. It's kind of the same, the one I had. Now, reason why, here's a big update on my car. The pan was leaking, which we know now my clutch finally gave out and this happened last month on the 20 i already dropped it off they already took care of it so they end up replacing the clutch a couple seals and my short shifter because um, i did hagger the f out of it to make uh, make it stay in place just because i was scared that i didn't do it right but never came apart I put adhesive on top so they replaced it and they put an actual uh, regular OEM shifter as you guys can see that mine would have been somewhere up there that would have been second and probably so there's a lot of play for the OEM shifter so that's why I want to go back on installing my short shifter because it's just big difference from going first second third and fourth they have like a longer throw and with the short shifter it's a shorter throw so i want to do that 
I will I will replace it and I will make a, a full video on that because there is videos where some people don't show it and don't really explain how to do it there's some good videos but then there's some videos that they skip some parts so I'll go ahead and show you guys on that but they replace transmission gaskets um, inner shaft and the outer shaft gasket because it was leaking and they also did the oil pan while they were doing the oil pan they noticed that both of my trans uh engine mounts were collapsed so i went ahead and replaced all of that so now with the end differential bushings were, were out every time i shifted there was a clunking sound in the back so that they took care of that too so for total i did pay two grand for all of that work yes i could have done it myself but i don't know it's i feel like it's a small garage to do a bunch of stuff like that um if i had like a backyard where i had an open space of course i'll lift the car as much as i can um as high as the jacks can handle but in this situation let's say if i jack it up a foot off the ground or more than a foot and it falls to the side i'm gonna hit the walls we got my neighbor on this side we got my neighbor on that side and um let's say i took the transmission out where am i gonna put it to get uh some space around here so that's the reason why i took it to them and i trust them but hopefully later on in the future i get a bigger spot then i will be doing stuff like that but for now this is pretty much it guys what uh i take care of little stuff <laughs> and um nothing major i don't have a engine hoist to uh grab the engine because you have to lift the engine in order to take out the engine mounts and good thing my car doesn't leak oil no more after they replaced the oil pan which i was pretty excited about that it hasn't leaked so that's good transmission it's not leaking differential is pretty good so the car is uh brand new it's fresh and believe it or not that could have been the other problem i don't get no more shakiness after 80. could be that the i mean the engine mounts were gone they were collapsed so it could have been that uh going that speed going 80 was making my engines um to vibrate a little bit more than what it does now nothing i don't know why but that fixed the problem it went away i could go 80 plus 90 and there is no vibration so it could be that the engine mount was doing so i could that was my speaker so it could be that my engine all that vibration was going towards the steering wheel but no vibration which is good but yeah that's it guys if you guys have any questions let me know and i'll try to answer asap but you guys will see the next video for the upper and lower boot and my expansion tank from fcp euro so all right guys stay tuned